by starting to sensitize people about our indigenous resources, and one of which was African indigenous vegetables, because many of our African people, Kenyans especially, were looking down upon these vegetables as for poor man's crop. So, uh, initiative that we started in 1991 at Joma Kenyatta University and Maseno University, where I worked, was to work with all the stakeholders, starting from policy makers, farmers, researchers, students, to be able to look at the African indigenous vegetables along the value chain so that we can grow them, we can talk about them, we eat them, and also we have policies, policies that can support them. So this actually was a summary of what I have been doing for the last over 30 years. We have sensitized the government, and as we speak now, we have a flagship project called Natural Products Initiative, which was initiated by the government through the Ministry of Gender and National Health of Kenya to commercialize three indigenous products. One, aloe vera, two, coconut, and indigenous vegetables. So we launched this project in uh, Bigger County early in the year. So we are going to see these vegetables coming up packaged as Bigger Greens and other products. So what we are saying is our vegetables that we have been neglecting can bring us money, not just locally and internationally. So this activity conference and what we've done, we are saying that African indigenous vegetables can contribute to the big four that the government is talking about, food and food nutrition and food security. These vegetables is a gold mine that the government cannot afford to ignore. We were, uh, we were privileged to receive funding from the USAID through the Horticulture Innovation Lab project and we're concluding a five-year program where our task was to link the introduction of African indigenous vegetables to improved nutrition and to generate, to assess the income generating opportunities for the commercialization of African indigenous vegetables. The take home message is this, Kenya and surrounding areas all over East Africa have a great wealth of plants that have never been domesticated and still found in the wild. A few of them had been begun to be brought into cultivation, they begun to be domesticated, including bondway, amaranth, spider plant, edible nightshades, and more. Consumers in the, these countries, from consumer studies, many Kenyans, Zambians, Tanzanians, would prefer to eat and consume these AIVs. But then when you ask them what do they eat on a daily basis, they're eating a lot of other products, not AIVs, and often their dietary diversity is very low. So AIVs, or African indigenous vegetables, or African traditional vegetables, or leafy vegetables, people will call them differently, are really largely an untapped reservoir of products that can provide local and regional health solutions to populations that are lacking in those vitamins, including, and, and micronutrients. Indigenous fruits is something Kenyans we've done poorly. But you go to all communities, even the Somalis, the Burana, and you ask them, what are your fruits? They'll name for you fruits. For example, guava in, uh, in uh, Burana, in Burji, okay, I've forgotten the name. It's a very unique name. So they have a name for it. But what we always assume is that these things are for birds and they're for kids. And we assume them. But we all ate them as we were children. But when we grew up, we forgot that we needed to continue eating them because you think you have money that you should eat more things like nyamachoma. So we're trying to really promote these African and utilized uh, fruits because they're drought uh, resilient, drought tolerant. For example, year in, year out, you hear it's, uh, the West Pokot people are eating guavas. That's what kept them alive. In one year, it was actually mango, whether I was talking about on one of the radio stations, you'll have mango boiled, mango fry, mango roast, and all of that. But it's a fruit. Because these fruits, they start bearing during the times of drought. So that's just their normal seasonal behavior. So at the time when it's so dry, you'll get a lot of guavas and a lot of all of these other fruits, java, plum, and the rest. And then a lot of them, we didn't even plant them, they just grew, maybe through birds uh, dispersing them or disseminating them. So they're very tolerant. So we're trying to go back, get these fruits from the wild, leave them there, but then have them in our farming systems so we can have more nutritious fruits all year round and not just the three months you get a, a mango in particular regions or avocado or banana, but have them all year round. And to be able to do that, we show them you can eat them fresh, you can dry them, 
you can make jam juice wine cheese all these products you can cook them in your rice cook them in your vegetables eating both together so you can really enjoy in terms of nutrition so you see now universities picking up these fruits meaning that now we're now moving towards commercialization and when we do this commercialization what we're focusing on is conservation the only way we'll conserve these things so they don't get lost is that when we're eating them. Because when we eat them, we'll plant them. When we plant them, there's our gene bank. Because if we just continue going how we're going, then we keep cutting trees, we'll lose everything. So how do we conserve our fruits and our vegetables? We must utilize them.